Hi, thanks for watching. Uh, today's little special thing here today, we're going to make uh, a different kind of pesto. Normally or traditionally, a pesto, even though pesto means paste, a traditional pesto would be green and uh, made basically from basil and pine nuts. This one is really a different thing. It's a paste, but it's it's not green. Uh, it's not it's not green tasting. It's not even garlicky tasting. Uh, so what this is basically is this is going to be made out of sun-dried tomatoes. Now a friend of mine um, has a garden and lots and lots and lots of tomatoes. And in California, if you grow tomatoes, uh, sometimes you can get two or three hundred tomatoes at one shot, and then it's what do you do with them? Uh, well, there's a couple things you can do. And what she did was slice them up and put them on a cookie sheet and bake them in the oven to make sun-dried tomatoes. Uh, you, you do it low and slow, like four or five hours at 200 degrees. And then you put them in a jar like this and put them in there full and you pack it with olive oil. Voila, you have tomatoes. Now these tomatoes are very, very tasty because they're homegrown. And I'm just going to put uh, several in here. Um, you don't have to rely on your friend to get sun-dried tomatoes. You can buy sun-dried tomatoes in many places. By the way, another beautiful thing about drying your own tomatoes is the oil. Now, I can't show you this oil, but this oil is red. It picks up the flavor of the tomato. It's, 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 it's extra virgin olive oil, but it's red now because it picks up the flavor of those tomatoes. And the beauty there is uh, what a wonderful salad dressing or addition to to you know, cooking your zucchini or anything, it's just amazing to have a flavored oil. But anyway, so I'm putting, uh, oh, let's, I don't even think that's quite a quarter cup in there of sun-dried tomatoes. And I, it's, it's under a quarter cup, but you know, what is that, three tablespoons? And I'm going to put about the same, and these are pecans. Traditionally, this one well, is not even a traditional thing. This is kind of made up, but but a lot of people use walnuts. I find walnuts can be a little strong and bitter, and sometimes people who have nut issues, short of allergies, walnuts tend to be the one that people have trouble with, and they're bitter. Pecans taste like walnuts, but they lack the bitterness. So I, I'm going to use the pecans in this, and like I said, it's just a little under, and I'm also using rosemary. This is a sprig of rosemary. Okay, a couple things. Fresh rosemary is really strong. Dried rosemary is not as strong. Fresh rosemary is very strong. Um, but this is a paste, so you're gonna, we're going to use a bunch of it. The other thing is you don't want to use the stems. So you kind of take this like this and you pull the sticks off like that. I mean the, the, the leaves off like that. Now I've got a bunch of it right here. With, that I've already pulled off and it's about two tablespoons of fresh rosemary okay now to this I'm gonna add two cloves of garlic right here and I'm also ooh, look at there a little skin I'm also gonna add now this is this is for a little heat here now this is called sambal it's chili paste um, I like it because it has just a little tang to it. It's got a little bit of garlic and stuff into it. You don't have to use this, but I do recommend putting some sort of chili, like a chili flake or something in there, just a little. Uh, well, I'm not after anything to burn my mouth out. I don't really care for that. But um, this adds a nice little interesting heat, and because everything else in there is so strong, I'm going to put about a teaspoon in there. And then I'm also going to put about, oh, the same amount of nuts and sun-dried tomatoes I'm going to use in, in uh, this is Parmigiano Reggiano right here and then I'm going to top it off with a little bit of oil until that gets down in there and, and then we're just going to grind this up and see where that takes us Okay, so I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to put a little salt in this first. And then stir it up. It, it, to me, I'm looking at it and it doesn't quite look red enough. So I'm, I'm probably going to put some more sun-dried tomatoes in it. I am. I am going to do that. Um, 
but it's a little full, so I guess I'm going to have to do this. Anyway, I'll be here. I'll be right back. Okay, so let's check this out. See, how, oh yeah, that looks very much better. Yeah, it is. It is perfect. Um, I will taste it in just a second here, but I'm going to put it in this container now. So what to do with this kind of thing? And you know, it's kind of tough when I say you can do anything with it because what does that really mean? However, uh, something like this, since it's a, it's a seasoning paste, so it really goes on whatever you feel like zipping up a notch. Um, this is not hot, so um, even though I put a little chili or sambal in it, it's, it's not hot. It's, it has a little spiciness to it, but there's no, there's no burning. And I, I, don't, I don't really care for my mouth being burned. But anyway, you can spread this over top. Say, slice some zucchinis up, spread it over the top of them, and bake them in the oven. Uh, you could add this just to some pot pa pasta, and it would be delicious, really. A little bit of oil in that, or a little bit of butter in that. You can put it on top of just slices of bread, um, slices of tomato for hors d'oeuvres, and maybe some buffalo mozzarella. Beautiful. Um, sandwiches. You could rub it on chicken. You could rub it on top of fish. You can even put it on beef. This one would go on beef totally. On a baked potato, it really... I mean, I could just keep going. It, 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 I wouldn't put it on fruit. I wouldn't eat it for breakfast, okay? Um, so it's not really a sweet thing. It's a very savory thing. It's tart, and it has a little bit of um, garlickiness and some cheesiness, some body because of the nuts that are grounded there. But tomatoes have a lot of <clears throat> umami. That's one of those other flavors. And uh, this one really just is super deep. In its, in its addition to something. So I'm going to suggest you even just try it on some French bread. Oh my goodness. That, that, it's, it is almost as perfect as it gets. Just a piece of French bread or a slice of Italian bread and just a little bit of this on there and it's, it's really out of this world. Anyway, uh, well, I hope you try this. I hope you like it. I, I got to tell you, I'm going to get a little taste of this here and see. Oh man, I gotta tell you, that really just runs circles in your mouth. And you, oh wow, and then and then and then and it just keeps developing. It really is a wonderful thing going on in my mouth right now. And so, if you have dinner guests, you can imagine when they take a bite and they would just woo. It's not too much. It's just right. So anyway, I urge you to try this. It's it's really wonderful. And it's fairly easy. Uh, the The recipe will follow, and uh, I, I hope you do. It's it's really worth it. Anyway, as always, remember your favorite flavor, your favorite taste. You haven't tried yet. Thanks for watching. Oh, and please like my page. Thanks.